Okay, so we're now going to look at a uh, find minimum. So if we look at this file called uh, scores.csv, you see I'm using the same code as before. And if I have a quick look at the um, file, you see I've just got names and a score. So what you'll see is I've got 50 names, and I've worked that one out just by obviously scrolling to the bottom. So I've got 50 names and 50 scores. Now it's the same code as before, and the only thing I'm going to do slightly differently is that when I read it, I don't want scores to be a string. They're all integers, so just make sure that you convert it to an integer when we read it in. And I've verified that, and it does seem to be working okay. So now we're going to do a find min. So what we're going to do is find the minimum score. So I'm going to call it function find min. And what we'll need to pass in, I'm just going to find the minimum value. So I actually just need to know whatever the scores array is. Now, just while I'm, so I've got a variable called names and scores, so I'm going to call that subroutine just now, and I'm going to say find min, and I'm going to pass in scores. So, a find min is fairly simple. So, what we're going to do is, what we're going to say is that at the minute, the highest value, uh, sorry, the lowest value is in the first position. So, what we're going to say is that the maximum, uh, sorry, the minimum score is whatever's in scores array, and it's in position zero. So at the minute, that is our smallest value. Is we'll loop for counter in range, and I'm actually going to start looping at one because it's pointless checking zero again, and we're going to loop up to the length of my scores array. Now, when I'm going through there, what I'm going to do is check if what I'm looking at is sm smaller than my first value, and if it is, so if scores array counter is less than what I'm looking at, which I've called min score, then what I'm going to say is that minimum score is now the current value I'm looking at. And then I'm just going to do a print line outside of my loop and say that the minimum score was, and I'm going to put str and it's going to be whatever min score was. So let's just walk through that. So the first time it's going to decide that 3186 is my smallest score. And it's going to be happy with that until it gets to down about here, so element 6. So I'm going to put a breakpoint um, there. So if I just go to debug, and I'm going to debug my find min program. So so far, everything seems to have been read. My scores array looks like it's okay. I'm just going to check the first three. 3186, 7978, and 7250. 3186, 7978, and 7250. So, relatively happy that seems to be working. And I'm just going to step through this line one at a time. So, my minimum score is now 3186. So, it said that that's my minimum score, which is okay. So, if I just step through again, now it's looking at position one. And I'm just going to add a watch here, so scores are a counter, so I'm just going to add a watch to that just to make life a little bit easier. So now it's looking at 7978, and my minimum score is 3186. So that if statement is going to value it as false, so it's just going to miss that and go around again. So now I'm looking at 7250, which still isn't smaller than 3186, so I'm just going to go around until... So counter four, I think of the position. Ah, now we got to position five. So we're down to um, here. You have to remember this line counts from line one, unfortunately. So this is now smaller than the value I was looking at. So if I hit step into my code, you'll see that that data value is true because what I was looking at, which is 3011, is less than 3186. So now it's set you'll see that 3011 is highlighted orange just to kind of show it. That is now my minimum value. So it's going to go through for the other um, 50 and I'm just going to cheat and right click and tell it to run to the cursor so it goes all through all my loops and you'll see that counter end up is 49. And it's told me that my minimum score, uh, sorry, my minimum score was 1112. Now that sounds about right. And if I just hit debug, you'll see that when I go to console, it to tells me my minimum score was 1012. And off the top of my head, I actually think that's okay, 
And I'm going to cheat and just look at that in a spreadsheet just to check that it actually is the minimum value. Don't just assume because your program is working that it's giving you the correct value. So I just opened up, and you can open up in any spreadsheet uh, program you want. And I'm just going to sort options, and I just want to sort the entire table, and I want to sort it by column two. And if I hit sort now, ignoring that top value there, my lowest value is 1,112. So that looks like it's about right. So that's a find min. Now I could write a find max subroutine. And it's going to be exactly the same, but just with one slight difference. I will call it max score. And max score, just to keep the variable names correctly. And I'll rewrite that as maximum. And max score again. So, in a minute, that's still a find min, just with different names. But this time, instead of finding if a value is smaller than, I'll change it to greater than. And off the top of my head, that should be, the highest value should be about 9,572. I'll still need to call the subroutine, so find min and find max. And if I just hit run there, I'm not going to do the debug line because I'm quite happy that it was working the last time. So that looks like it's fine. So, at the minimum we've got a find min and a find max. However, if after I've found the find min and max, I want to display the name, I don't actually need to store the actual score. What I need to actually store is the position that it's at. So, I'm going to make a very, very slight change to this. When we store our minimum score, we're not actually going to, to store just that. What we're going to do is we're actually going to store the position. So, I can still keep the score there, and that's fine. But when I find something new here, so I'm going to actually store a new variable called minpos. I'm going to set it to zero as well at the start. So when I find it, I can still find out what the score is. But to be honest, what I want to say is that the minimum position is whatever I'm looking at. So if I just get rid of that line there, and that line there, now I'm going to do the same down here. So I had a max, uh, find max down here. So max pos is just position, z sorry, element zero. So we're still just saying that it is the first element. And rather than max score, we'll say max position is whatever counter is. Now, that means that when I get to here, I probably want to know the names here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass my names array in. I'm going to do the same for my find max, and also I'll just need to um, put in names down there. Now, the reason I made those changes is the minimum score was, and it was actually held in, rather than knowing the value, I just know the position it's in, so it was held in scores array, min position. So if I just grab that line there, I'm going to just paste it in that line there and change my min to max. So let's just check that everything still works first. Okay, now if scores array is greater than max score, so we've got a uh, syntax error there in line 23 because we forgot to change our condition. Because our condition now is not min pos, it's actually whatever the scores array is at the minimum position. So I will have made that error in there as well. But min pos needs to be sorry, max position. So if I just clear my errors and I will just run it again. So now there's definitely a problem with the maximum position because I am pretty sure that the maximum position was much later. Now I have deliberately left this error in because this is where Python can cause you some issues. You'll see that it looks like I should be kidding. Now, PyCharm helps me a little bit. If I click on a variable name, it highlights all of the same variable names. It's got an underscore there saying there's a typo, or it thinks there's a typo. You'll see that I put one extra letter in there. 
Now what's happening is it's making a new variable, a new variable called max fpos, and that was all that was causing that error. So if I hit run, that looks better. So 9,572. So let's just double check that. Yep, that looks like it's okay. And I remember that the minimum value was 1,112. Because what that now means, so if I just, what I want to do now is I want to display um, the score. So what I'm going to do is pass in scores names and what I want to do is I want to display the name of the person with the highest score and the name of the person with the lowest. So I'll call display details actually. So I'll just quickly change that line down there. Okay, I'm passing in, um, save as before, my scores and my names array. But I'm also going to pass in two extra variables. Because what I'm going to do out here is I'm going to return whatever my minimum position was. And I'm going to return whatever my maximum position was. So I'm going to put min pos is that and max pos is that. And I'm going to pass those two in. Oops. I'm going to pass those two in so that I can use them to display the relevant deta details. So if I put in min position and maximum position. So if I quickly put min and max, I'm going to say print the max score was. Now I can actually just steal my line from that. But it's not um, max pos, I just called it max there. And I'm going to put in by, oops, sorry, by space. And I don't need to put the string because we're still dealing with name. So by names array, max. So, and I'll copy this one to do the min. I just need to change a few things here. And then I'm going to walk through this program just to check that it's still all working. So, if we hit run, let's see if it actually works. Now, it looks okay. I just need an extra space there. And let's just double check that 9572 was by Paul Davidson. So that looks about correct. But let's look and see how that's actually working. So, let's walk through our find min first. So, yeah, press continue. Okay, so I'm just going to step through. Now, I can't remember where exactly the position was, but what you see is that counter is 1, so it says that the minimum position is 0. Okay, and at the minute it's looking at counter is 1, and scores array and counter is 7978, so let's just double check. So it's looking there. So at the minute it thinks its minimum pos position was position 0, and that's correct. Now it won't actually change that until it gets to Cordelia Smith. So, uh, and what was her score? Sorry, her score was 3011. So that's definitely going to be different. So I'm just going to walk through here until I see 3011 down here in my watch list. So, there we go. Right, so now the minimum position is still zero. But because this new value is less than my old value, you'll see that I've actually gone into my if statement and I've updated it. So now I'm saying my minimum position is 5. So if I just right click and run to that cursor, it's went all the way through and it's found that my minimum position was 19. And if I just have a quick look there, it's basically saying, remember, just because it's count someone, so it's saying that that was my minimum position and that's correct. So if that is working, I'm going to put another breakpoint down there and I'm going to tell it to run to the cursor. Sorry, I should have just stopped the program there. I'll take off that breakpoint there, go to my console, and I'll just run my program again. In fact, I can see it there. So it's it's the maximum score seems to be working, and the minimum score seems to be working as well. Now, if you want to not need to do a breakpoint all the time, I'm just going to copy that value there. We can do what's called a watch point. 
Now a watch point is just like a break point. It will stop the program, but it'll only stop it at a particular position. So for example, when we're doing we're find min, I know that the first time it's got to do anything will be when it equals 3011. It's when the variable scores array counter is 3011. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a break point there and I'm going to add a condition. And the condition is going to be that scores array is sorry counter is equal to the variable 3011 and I'm going to press done. So it won't actually, when I hit debug this time it won't continue, it, sorry it won't stop the first time, it'll only stop when that particular condition is true. So I hit run and I hit debug I'm hoping that look it's missed out the first five conditions and it's actually stopped when th that scores array counter condition was true and it equaled 3011. That way I can narrow down my um, my, de my debugging runs and my dry runs through my, uh, sorry, my walkthroughs through my code. Just for efficiency, we didn't actually need to look, I mean, okay, these arrays are only 50, carat, 50 items wrong. We don't actually need to do two run-throughs the entire array. It is actually possible to combine these into one function. So if I actually put an extra line here saying find maximum minimum, if I get rid of that position there, now I'm going to say my minimum score, I'm going to cut that out, oops, I'm going to cut that out and put it down here. I'm going to say I'm going to find both the minimum position and the maximum position, so I'm going to change it to that line there. I'm just going to bring my lines up a little bit. I'm going to move my max position variable up to there. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm actually going to get rid of this loop and just have when I'm going through that if what I'm looking at is less than, I'm going to change my minimum position. And I'm not going to do an if, I'm going to do an else if. Else if the scores array is greater than that, then I'll update the maximum position there. So, when I'm looking at, if what I'm looking at is less than, else if it's greater than, and I'll update my min position, my maximum position. Now it is important, however, that I put that return line down here, because as soon as the return line is hit, the program will stop. And that means I can actually say that max position and max position, and I'll call it, better not call it find min max, I'll call it find min max. And I will just change my subroutine there. And that means I can actually get rid of that one. And hopefully, if I run that program, I've taken away all my breakpoints and such. So those were printing off just inside it. And then you'll see that I've managed to condense that into one single loop with a branching if else if statement.